Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jamie Smith. I'm the Graduate Top Programs Manager for the Faculty of Laws at UCL and we just want to welcome you to this um, open day session for the LLM here at UCL Laws. Um, hopefully you've seen in the chat a bit of an overview of the structure of today's event. Um, I'll be sort of hosting the session and I'm joined by a number of panelists, some colleagues from the faculty, as well as current LLM students. Um, and hopefully um, whether you're at application stage or you're an offer holder and you're thinking about um, planning for the course, hopefully you'll find today that you'll get some more information about what to expect and have an opportunity to answer, um, ask and get any questions answered that you might still have about whatever phase um, of the process that you're in. Um, so before we get started, um, we'll just go around and have a bit of an introduction from each one of the panel members here today. Um, we'll start off with Sarah Campling, who is our program director. Everybody, thank you so much for taking the time and the trouble to log into our session today. We hope you're going, you're going to hear lots of interesting things about our LLM here at UCL. As Jamie says, I'm the programme director, which means my job is to support LLM students along their journey through the LLM programme. So um, I'll be there with you from your applications to your enrolment, um, for the first week of induction, I'll lead the induction course with you and then I'll be in the background whilst you attend your talk modules, you do your assessments and hopefully I'll see you at the end of the course at graduation. So thanks very much for joining us today. I look forward to speaking to you later. Thanks, Sarah. Um, next up, we have Ruba Farah, who is our programmes officer. Yeah, just uh, uh, hello. Uh, as Jamie said, I'm Reba Fair. I'm the program officer uh, in the graduate office in the faculty. I uh, basically manage the day to day running of the program side of the LLM program. Thank you. Thanks, Reba. Um, next up, we have Jane Hall. She's our admissions officer. Um, if you've emailed in, you might have been liaising with her already. Hi, I'm Jane. Um, I'm the, as Jamie says, I'm the graduate admissions officer. If you um, ask any questions to the LLM inbox or if you phone through, um, usually it'll be myself or my colleague um, replying to you. Um, and yeah, if you've got any questions about the application process, just let us know. Thanks, Jane. Um, and then we have um, some students today with us as well. We'll start with Anshul. Hi, I'm Anshul Alsanani. I hail from India. I have a background in engineering and law and have earned my undergraduate degree from University of Mumbai, India. I'm currently pursuing LLM, specializing in corporate law here at UCL. The modules that I've selected are legal aspects of international finance and alternative dispute resolution and cross-border and mergers and acquisition. It's a pleasure to be here and share my journey and experience with you all today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, next up we have Eleni. Um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Eleni and I'm from Greece. Um, I completed my um, LLB uh, studies at the University of Reading and then I came straight at the UCL University. Um, I'm doing the LLM with maritime specialism and I'm also a course rep. So if you have any questions, you can always uh, ask us at the chat. Thank you. Great, thanks, Eleni. And last, we have Danian. Hi, um, my name is Danian Wan. Um, I did my undergraduate law degree at the University of Hong Kong, um, and I'm doing a general LM. That means that I don't have any specialism, which means that I can choose pretty much any module I like. So I've chose um, international commercial litigation, um, international human rights law, um, judges and judicial decision making and um, aspects of national security law um, or, as well as uh, having a module on international mooting. So um, please feel free to ask any questions. I'd be happy to answer any. Thanks so much, Damien, um, and thanks to all of our panelists. Um, <clears throat> also in the background, we have a few extra colleagues, um, some of our admissions colleagues um, who can support with additional queries um, as the session goes on. Um, and thanks as well to Emma from our events team for supporting today. 
Um, so we'll kick off um, first with Sarah's presentation, um, a bit more about applying to the LLM, a bit more about the programme. Um, if during this session um, you've got questions, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Once Sarah's presentation is concluded, we'll start working through the questions that are in the Q&A um, area of the webinar, um, and we'll try and answer as many of those as we can live um, as well. So with that in mind, I'll hand over to Sarah um, and we shall pick up with your questions afterwards. Thank you very much, Jamie. That's really helpful of you. Um, I'm about to share my screen. So could you somebody please tell me whether or not they can see there, see my screen when I have shared it? You can all hear me and I'm going to talk to you about our fabulous course. As I say, I'm the Director of Graduate Talk Programmes, which means I'm the Director of DLLM, and I will support you along your role, along your journey through the LLM, should you decide to join us, and uh, should you be lucky enough to be offered a place, and should you decide to join us. So if you're thinking now, why should I study a Master of Laws, as many of you will do, well, most of you will probably have done an undergraduate degree, which involves compulsory subjects, and you may have developed um, an interest in a particular area of law, or you may have thought that particular area of law is more relevant to the type of work that you want to do when you've completed, uh, or the work that you've typed that you that you want to do. Sorry, um, so you might want to specialise. You might want to become a competition lawyer or you might think that human rights is the thing that you're interested in. Or you might have thought, okay, I want to do something about legal history or law and social justice, or actually I, I want to become an international lawyer. And so you want to specialize by studying some modules that are much more relevant to the work that you want to do after the course, because you might want to become a solicitor, you might want to become a corporate solicitor in a big city law firm, you may want to be a barrister or another type of lawyer. Alternatively, you may want to get involved in some policy work. You might be thinking about working for local government or the uh, local government or national government, or you might want to become a regulator. You may not want to do any of those sorts of work, but you might have decided already that you want to study for a PhD. And if you do, an LLM is obviously a good stepping stone on your way for applying for a PhD. You may also have thought that you would like to teach law. You may have seen your teachers and thought, I can do that. So you may have decided that you want to go on and become an academic. And of course, a Master of Laws would be required in order to become an academic. It may be that you finish your undergraduate course and you just want some time to reflect. You want to spend a year doing something interesting, worthwhile, and in London, getting to know the fabulous city that London is. Okay, so, sorry, we'll just go back. Um, if you do decide to study with us at UCL, the Faculty of Laws is um, at the heart of Legal London, which is amazing, because that means if you have a break or a day with no classes, you can go and observe a hearing. You could go to the Royal Courts of Justice in the Strand. You could go to the UK Supreme Court. You could go and observe a competition tribunal case in the competition tribunal. Um, there's a huge amount of... Um, legal organisations that you can go and observe in London. It also means that we are very close, excuse me, it also means that we are very close to where people work, where the, lead, where the leading practitioners are working. So we may have visits from judges, barristers, solicitors, who are at the cutting edge of law in London, who can pop into Bentham House after work to join a class or to give a talk. So Bentham House, right in the middle of legal London, um, where we have the world leading academics and practitioners. So our academics and teachers are located in offices in Bentham House. We um, have been uh, 
rated as the number one UK law school in The Guardian, number one in the UK for, rep, for research in the REP in 2021. So we're a very high status uh, law school and um, I hope that you'll want to join us. So inside Bentham House, I've just shown you a little bit of outside of Bentham House, inside Bentham House, um, and this is a picture of some students in Bentham House, including our previous uh, graduate Law Society president. Um, inside Bentham House, you'll find a student hub, which is a social centre for students, where there's a cafe. There's also a moot court. So if you're interested in developing your advocacy skills, you may get the opportunity to do that in the moot courtroom. There's a common room for LLM students to socialise with each other. And there are also lots of brand new teaching rooms and lecture theatres. Now, it won't necessarily be the case that all of your classes are inside Bentham House. So some of your classes may be in other locations on the UCL campus. And that's a great opportunity to meet with students who are studying other subjects and to get to know the campus. So why study at UCL? Well, firstly, our academics are second to none. I would advise you to have a look at the website, to look at the academics there that work in the faculty and to look at their research and the modules that they teach on. My favorite thing about the LLM at UCL is the student diversity. So we have students from every different country in the world that you can imagine. Well, perhaps not every country, but we usually have students from about 60 different jurisdictions. So the classroom is amazingly diverse. And when you're in the classroom, you'll see students from different countries who will be able to tell you about their different legal experiences, about their background. It's a great opportunity to make contacts and it really does make for interesting discussions in the classroom. As well as students from very many different countries, we have students at different stages of their careers. So we have lots of students who've come straight from an undergraduate uh, degree, but we also have students that have worked in um, law normally for several years. We sometimes have students at the end of their careers who, or the middle of their careers who want to change, we have students at the end of their careers who've uh, decided to leave work and want to do something useful and interesting with their time. So massive student diversity. Uh, the other great thing about the LLM at UCL is that you can choose either to study a general LLM or one of our specialisms. And you can see that the students that we've been invited to speak to you today have done um, a variety of different specialisms, and I think one's on the general LLM. Uh, we also have a huge range of modules. So we have modules in every area that you can think of, whether it be company law, um, comparative constitutional law, refugee law, environmental law, international commercial litigation, human rights, foreign relations, um, uh, law and policy of climate change, fintech, legal aspects of international finance, M&A, marine insurance. Um, we have so many different modules to choose from. So you can look at those modules on the website. And as my, uh, as the, one of the students said, the, if you study the general LLM, you can choose any of those modules in combination. As well as your taught modules, you are required to do a research essay. That's a great opportunity to research and write about an area that you're particularly interested in. So you decide the topic for your research essay and throughout the course, along with your taught modules, you research and write that research essay for submission in the final term. Uh, the LLM at UCL is a 10 month program. You'll find that lots of LLM courses are 12 months programs, but ours is a 10 month program, which means that you finish earlier in the summer, which gives you some time in the summer to uh, get some work experience or to go traveling or to take a break before you go back to work. If you're on a break from work or um, enter the job market early. So, yeah, it's a different type of program. It's 10 months. It's not 12 months. 
We also have an amazing range of extracurricular activities, which I'll speak to you about in a moment, and a fabulous careers consultant. So these are the specialisms planned for next year. We can't guarantee that they will all run, but we, we're planning at this stage for them to run. You can see there's a wide variety. So if you do not want to choose a particular specialism, and that's a question which I imagine that you might be asking later, if you don't want to choose a particular specialism, you can keep your options open and study the general LLM. Otherwise, there's a variety of specialisms that you can study. Um, some of the resources that are open to you. So this picture here is a picture, I think, inside the Student Centre, which is a centre for all UCL students. Um, you can ask the students about their experiences here if they go there. The other thing which is amazing for LLM students is membership of IELTS, or the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. It's one of the best law libraries in the world and LLM students are given entry to IELTS. And as well, of course, you can go to our normal UCL library. As I said earlier, we have a student hub in Bentham House as well, where you can socialize with your colleagues and a common room. So the LLM program itself, the period of study, if you study full-time, it's 10 months. If it's part-time, it's two years. Or the third alternative is to study flexibly over five years. If you choose to study the 10-month programme, you will start the programme with a one-week induction week. And during that week, all of the students are together. Uh, it's a programme of large group sessions, lectures and small group sessions. So you get the opportunity to meet some of the other students on the programme and um, not only do we give you information and about the contents of the programme, we do things like, like um, an introduction to the common law, we do sessions on problem solving, um, but also we have lots of social events. So we have meet your personal, meet your academic mentor group when you meet with a group of about 10, 15 students and you do some activities together. Um, and we also usually have uh, some so social evenings as well. So induction week, that's my favorite part of the uh, course. That's the first week when everybody arrives from around the world, all very excited. After one week of induction, then the work starts, I'm afraid. So term one is teaching, term two, more teaching, Term three, assessments, and you need to choose 135 talk credits. Usually that's three 45 credit modules, although you can do a combination of 45 credits and 22 and a half credit modules, as long as your talk modules all add up to 135 talk credits. Also during terms one, two, and the beginning of three, you will be writing a research essay so that's your opportunity to research and um, find out about and write about an area that you're really interested in. It's your opportunity to shine, to show them how you can do research um, independently and produce an independent piece of work. 45 credits for the research essay plus 135 talk credits for the talk modules makes a total of 180 credits which makes an LLM. So there's, um, there's the year diagrammatically. Induction week, term one, taught modules in the research essay, term two, taught modules, term three, assessment. Huge variety of extracurricular activities are available. I hope the students will be able to tell you about some of the things that they've been involved in. So if you're thinking of becoming an academic, you might want to contribute by writing um, articles for the UCL Journal of Law and Jurisprudence, or you might want to get involved in editing that journal. There's also the Centre for Access to Justice, which has a huge range of opportunities if you want to have some experience of advising clients or getting involved in um, uh, social justice issues. Centre for Access to Justice has a lot of opportunities. 
if you are thinking about becoming an academic, the program for law teachers might be the extracurricular activity for you when you can um, learn and practice teaching. The Graduate Law Society is a very lively and busy society. They put on all sorts of events for the LLM students. We have an academic legal writing course which supports you during the course to help you develop your legal writing skills. Uh, we have amazing and fantastic student representatives, one of whom is here today, who represent the interests of students with whom I meet and they're able to feed back to the faculty the issues that um, students are addressing at the relevant time. We also have a mooting opportunities and hopefully we'll hear about that from one of the students today. And in the departments in the evenings, there are often lectures and talks so you can sign up for an open talk or a public talk in the evening, go and listen to the lecture and um, network with the presenters and the audience after the talk. OK, so for the LLM entry requirements, you're probably familiar with this, but the best place to look is at the, on the UCL Laws website you'll see that there are academic requirements and English language requirements. So for the academic requirements, we're normally looking for an average of 65% across all years or the international equivalent, although we can also consider applications with an average of 62% and above across all years where the applicant excels in motivation, analytical and reasoning ability and communication skills. Um, the English language requirements are also set out on the website for you. So a question that I'm often asked is, what should I write about in my personal statement on the application form? So my advice to you is to uh, spend some time thinking about this, and particularly spend some time looking at the UCL Laws website to think about why you want to study law at UCL particularly. Um, it's helpful if you can include um, something about the taught modules you're interested in studying, and if you're interested in following a particular specialist and why that is. We won't keep you to that, and we won't keep you, if you include something about your research essay and your proposed um, ideas for studying and your research essay, we won't keep you to it, but it's really helpful to the person assessing your application if you can show that you have given time to thinking about what you want to study and why you want to study it. Also, we ask you to write a piece of written work a topic on a topic of contemporary relevance to your area of legal interest. Again, we don't keep you to this, and it doesn't have to be the specialism to which you're applying. It's um, 750 words. And the important thing about the written work is that it demonstrates your reasoning ability and analytical ability and your communication skills. So we're looking at how you write. We're very lucky at UCL Laws in that we have a dedicated laws careers consultant, Stephen German, who provides support to UCL Laws students. Um, last night, I think he had a session with UCL Laws alumni, people who've um, completed and finished the LLM, who have come back to the university to talk to current students about their careers. So he puts on sessions like that, general career sessions. He does one-to-one -one appointments, provides a law careers newsletter, lots of information about careers from Stephen. So... I think you've got the opportunity to ask questions now, but if you have questions that occur to you after you finish today, then please do email our fabulous admissions team who will be able to help you. And hopefully I've stopped sharing my screen now. You have, thank you, Sarah. And I'll pass back to Jamie, who's going to lead us through the questions that you're asking. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. Um, hopefully everyone found uh, found that 
overview quite helpful. Hopefully that's answered some of your questions so far. Um, we have had uh, a few questions come through already, um, and I'm going to focus first on a few that are admissions based, um, just because that feels like a natural start. Um, so Jane, I wonder if you are able to answer a few questions, um, particularly around the deadline. Um, Sarah might want to come in on this as well. Um, we have got two kind of similar questions. One is um, there's a March deadline, but also notice that admissions are on a rolling basis. If I apply by early March, is that too late? And someone else has asked, when do applications for the LLM officially close? I've read that um, on the website that applications close <clears throat> once all places have been filled. Is there a usual time in the year where we should expect for all of those places to be filled? Yeah, okay, so the official deadline is, there's actually two, so it depends on whether you need a visa in order to come to the UK to study um, or not. So if you require a visa, the deadline is the 5th of April. If you don't require a visa, then it is the 30th of August. Now, we do say that apply as early as possible, because if we do fill up all places, then we will close early. If that happens, so we'll be always tracking the number of offers that go out, um, then we will try to give at least two weeks notice on the website. Um, but we would always say, try to get your application in earlier rather than uh, later. Thanks so much, Jane. There's another question that you might be helpful with. Um, so the way that applications work, um, students apply directly to the specialism that they're planning to study. Um, sometimes they might change their mind. Um, of course, we um, we would suggest and recommend that, you know, before you apply for the course that you're really firm on your decision on whether or not to do the general LLM or a particular specialism. Um, but for an applicant um, or an offer holder who wants to change the special specialism that they've applied to, um, Jane, could you just give an overview of the process they should follow at this stage? Yep, so we do allow changes. Um, we say we will allow it once, usually, um, and you just need to email in um, and let us know, so llm-admissions at ucl.ac.uk, um, and we can um, change the change of specialism for you. Um, we say, please try to let us know as early as possible. Um, Definitely before enrollment happens, which is usually middle of August, um, because it gets really tricky after that, um, once you become an enrolled student to change you over. Um, we, I should also say that there's the potential for specialisms to fill up. Um, so if there's something that you definitely want to change over to and you know that for sure, let us know earlier so that then we can change you over, um, because it might mean that you won't be able to change later on if a specialism is full, like one of the popular ones, like corporate law or something. Um, generally, the, the less popular specialisms, we should be able to switch you over onto, for example, like human rights or uh, public law. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jane. Um, we've also had a question, maybe go to Sarah in the first instance, and then maybe some volunteers from our students as well about who might want to answer this. Um, but we've had one attendee ask about any advice for improving their legal language skills or their language skills before starting the program. Um, we've got some fairly high English language requirements for the program, so it's really important that you feel confident. That's a really interesting question, um, which I haven't been asked before, I don't think. So I hope the students are going to be more helpful with this than I'm going to be. I would say one thing to do is to try and go online and see if there are any court hearings that are being live streamed. So I think, for example, you could go and watch the UK Supreme Court and hearings are live streamed in the Supreme Court. So you may be able to go in, listen to those. So that would be a, le a legal listening language experience. My other advice would be to find other students who are hoping to do a LLM, who've already got law experience, make friends with them and have some chats online with them orally so that you can um, develop your legal language skills. I think the students would be much better at answering this question than me though. 
Thanks, Sarah. I'll ask for volunteers from the students um, before just picking on any of you. Uh, yeah, Eleni. Uh, um, sorry, uh, but um, I tried to understand the question. So the person that asked that question, probably they are an international student that they are coming here for the first time. I mean, in the UK, right? Because um, when I started my LLB, I was also an international student and I had the same feeling that um, I don't understand the language, it might be difficult. And one thing I really like about law is that it has its own language, so you don't really have to know all the vocabulary that we did at school. Um, there are so many uh, new like uh, phrases that you may need to know and stuff like that. So. One advice I will give is to read. If you do like the reading that your tutor suggests, probably you are gonna find all those legal uh, phrases and all those legal words that you need to. And now that everything is online as well, you can have access to like, for me, for example, sometimes I like translating like some keywords from English to Greek so that I understand that concept that we do like in the English legal system, what is like um, the same thing in the Greek legal system as well. So it might help me understand more. Uh, but I think the most important thing is like, if you do reading and if you try to ask questions as well to your tutors, probably you're not gonna have any difficulties. It's not that difficult as it seems. Like at the start it might be, but not after a period of time. Thank you. <laughs> That's really helpful. Thanks so much, Eleni. And Anshul? Um, yeah, there's one one more thing that I would like to add in. Um, usually the legal language is more or less the same everywhere around the globe. But and um, one thing that I really liked about UCL is like when uh when you actually come across any legal terms which might be specific to the English legal system, the professors actually um turn it down and actually go on a lower level to explain it to you. So I don't think so. there's much that you need to be worrying about uh, knowing particularly about any legal language as such. Um, I mean, if you've done your undergraduate in law, so you should be good to go. Thank you. Thanks, Anshul. And Danian, did you have your hand up as well? Yes, um, just something to add. So um, the course has a quite high English language requirement from the beginning. So um, if you've been accepted, um, you're probably going to do all right with your basic English and you'll um, sail through um, your course's understanding. But um, I echo what Eleni has said. Um, if you want to, for example, brush up on um, language, it would probably be more beneficial if you um, focus on legal language instead of like general English language, because you shouldn't really have a problem with that one. So um, my, advice, my advice would be um, more legally focused, for example, as um, Sarah has said, um, maybe look at some hearings or maybe look at more legal texts in, uh, instead of like general English improvement. That would be my advice. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, next up, a couple of kind of program related questions. Um, Ruva, if you're happy to answer these. Um, the first one is, will there be any changes to the list of modules that are um, that are currently available for this academic year um, for next academic year? Um, yes, basically, we're going to publish our modules that are going to be offered um, next academic year um, sometime in the spring. So we would advise you that you keep checking um, the website regularly for any updates. And we will have for every module listed a summary, uh, a module summary, which explains um, um, the, the, you know, sort of a, a, it gives a, a brief a structure of how the module will run, preliminary readings or any other recommended readings. Um, our module lists, unfortunately, they're not the same every year. They do change every year depending on availability, depending on what specialisms are running. 
um, and therefore what is available for this year on the website currently may not be available next year. So what we would advise is that you keep checking the website regularly for updates and hopefully sometime in the spring, possibly by the end of March, um, we will have a list on the website with the, um, with the uh, modules that are going to be offered next year. And also just to let you know um, that there are occasions or there may be occasions when the list that we publish may need to change at short notice depending on um, on extenuating circumstances or other mitigating circumstances. So the website is the guide uh, for um, offer orders and prospective students to look at um, for any regular updates. Thank you, Jamie. Great, thanks so much, Ruba. Um, and then also Sarah kind of covered this in her presentation, but Ruba, if you're happy um, to just provide some more detail, um, a question about the assessment periods. Um, does assessment normally take place at the end of each semester or at the end of the whole academic year? Um, so uh, the LLM programs assessments normally take place in term three, um, which is normally end of April to end of May, but the accurate um, a period will be published before um, you start your program. Uh, it will be in the um, module and program handbook as uh, you start the program. Um, the only exception uh, to the assessment period taking place in term three are oral presentations that take place in class um, where they need to be held before um, the actual assessment period. But that information will be available um, on the module Moodle pages and will be also uh, further information will also be given by the module convener um, at the time. But the majority um, of our LLM assessments take place in term three. Thank you, Jane. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ruba. Um, right, next question, we'll probably start off with Sarah, and will also be interesting to hear from the students on this as well. It's a question we often receive. Um, thinking about selecting a specialism versus the general LLM, um, does taking a specialism provide any professional advantage over taking a general LLM if the same modules are completed? Um, we've got one applicant um, who's thinking about uh, weighing up a couple of different specialism options at the moment. Um, Sarah, over to you first, and then maybe we'll hear a bit more about how the students um, came to their choice of programme. Thank you very much. Um, well, there's no right answer to this question. So students often ask, should I apply for a specialism or should I apply for a general LLM? Um, it depends is the answer. So if you're um, wanting to keep your options open, you're not 100 percent sure about where you're going after you have completed the LLM, then um, keep your options open with a general LLM, I would say. If you are pretty sure that you want to be a human rights lawyer or an intellectual property lawyer or a competition lawyer, then maybe think of having a specialism. My view is that employers who are very concerned about what you've studied will delve deeper into your LLM than just looking at the title. So, um, if you're applying to be a, um, I don't know, an intellectual property lawyer or an environmental lawyer, uh, the employers that are looking at those, at those um, look, uh, recruiting for those types of jobs will be looking at the modules as opposed to the name of the degree. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing what, how the students chose their specialisms. Uh, yeah, we'll go to Eleni first. Yeah, uh, so basically, um, I knew from the start that I wanted to do maritime law. And I think one of the reasons is because I'm Greek and I might want to go back and in Greece, like uh, maritime law has a huge power. But I understand all those students that they may have like difficulties in choosing. So, and because I also interact with others that they do the general LLM I will feel like if you want to like do especially so badly because you only think about that and it's something like it's your passion then do it otherwise you can also do like the general LLM and then pick modules that you feel are relevant to that because you also have to think about that the research essay is going to be based on your specialist as well so if it's not something that you are 100% sure you want I think it will be a waste of your time of researching something 
that you may not do even in the future. That's my um, advice. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Eleni. And Anshul? Um, yeah, so I actually agree with what Sarah and Eleni said. Um, like if you already have in mind what you want to do after completing this course, so it's better you go for the specialization. Uh, for me, I was myself confused between uh, general and corporate law, but then what helped me was to go through the modules and um, I had shortlisted a few modules and it turned out that most of the modules were a part of the corporate law. And that is exactly where I wanted to go as well. So that's one thing that really helped me in choosing my specialization. Uh, except that I don't think so it actually makes any much of a difference because like uh, Sarah said, like what matters is the modules and how you do in it. So yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Anshul. And Danian, do you want to talk a bit about your experience? Um, if you were weighing up any specialisms, if you always knew you wanted to do the general LLM and what you find to be um, the advantage for you in that? No. Uh, so um, I... <laughs> Uh, when I was, uh, I did uh, contemplate choosing a specialism, but I uh, am a very, very late decider. And um, because UCL is offering so many um, areas of subjects that I didn't previously have, um, previously uh, had experience to in my undergraduate study. So I didn't, I couldn't decide on a specialism. So I went for a general LLM and then I decided on my modules actually after um, talking with Sarah at, at the start of term one. Well, I got some very helpful advice. So, uh, but I honestly don't think um, having a specialism or being a general um, made such a big difference uh, in terms of student experience. Um, Sarah touched upon whether employers will look at that. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, student experience, I don't think uh, it really makes a big difference. And I like to keep my options open. So I think general was a pretty good choice for me at the time. I'm sorry, just one more thing. And at the end of the day, when I came to UCL, um, uh, most of my subjects now are on international law, uh, but I don't, uh, but I didn't declare a specialism on uh, international law, but uh, it still enabled me to pretty much focus on international law at the moment. So um, general is a pretty good choice if you haven't made up your mind. Excellent. Thanks so much. Always a massive struggle um, as part of the application process um, for um, inquiring students. Um, there was a suggestion as well, um, kind of following on for that, um, or a question about whether there's a way to talk to current LLM students about their specialism or the modules that they've taken. Um, obviously, we offer these kind of open day sessions with students to give a bit of information about their um, experiences, but perhaps that's something we can think about um, kind of as we get closer to the start of term, um, potential suggestion, um, if we were able to kind of uh, get some students to engage with our offer, hurdle, offer holders around those choices. Um, there was also a question about which scholarships are available for international students. Um, Jane, I wondered if you would be able to uh, speak to that. I know um, within laws, we've got our kind of academic excellence scholarship, but I think the deadlines for that have now passed. Um, obviously, there's other UCL scholarship opportunities that we advertise, um, you know, link through on our website. Um, so yeah, over to you, Jane, if you're happy to advise. Yeah, so the deadlines um, have passed for the LLM specific uh, scholarships. Um, however, um, I would just advise you to take a look at the UCL um, scholarships and funding pages. Um, they have lots of different um, opportunities on there. You'll have to go through um, the different um, schemes to see what the eligibility requirements are and whether you meet them. Um, but I think that's the best place to go. They also um, I think they post um, external um, scholarship opportunities as well. If they know of them, they will post them on there. Um, but yeah, take a look on the central UCL website. Excellent, thanks Jane. Um, next up, I have a question for Sarah. Not sure if I've seen um, your videos off. There we go. Um, the, this um, person has asked for uh, additional guidance on the written work. Does it have to look like something academic? Uh, the written work is something that we use to assess your analytical and reasoning ability skills. 
So frankly, um, it's not a bad idea for it to look like something academic rather than something practical. Um, it's not a bad idea for it to include an opinion or answer a question or um, analyze um, some error of law that's uh, likely to change or has changed. So as you can see, we're trying to assess your analytical and reasoning ability. So you may want to show us that you can analyze a piece of law and you can reason as to why it's a good change or a bad change or doesn't make any difference. And we're also using it to um, assess your communication skills. So make sure it's beautifully written. Thanks, Sarah. Um, we also had a question um, that perhaps you can start with and then we can check in um, with our students as well. Um, is there any, uh, one person has asked about the kind of career support in place um, within the faculty, particularly for international students. Um, we've also had a question, um, a couple of questions around like pursuing a career in academics um, and the support around that. Um, so I wondered if Sarah, if you could just expand a bit more um, uh, about kind of like uh, career options, the career service, and then if any of the students have engaged um, with our local career service, kind of the experience that they've had so far um, could be quite useful to hear. Okay, thank you, Amy. Um, I'm glad you asked about this because we've got an amazing support in our careers consultant, Stephen German, who is able to offer advice about legal careers um, he is an expert, absolute expert on how to apply for legal positions, including um, pupillages, training contracts and such like. And he um, offers all sorts of support, which includes things like the opportunity to have practice role play interviews, feedback on your CVs. Um, there are group sessions about how to uh, apply for jobs. There's a group session on networking. Um, one year he did a session on international students and networking and um, making, making opportunities. Um, he's really uh, provides a very good service. And of course, as well as the our careers consultant, who's a specialist legal careers consultant, there's the UCL careers office who are able to give information about a wider range of careers. If you're wanting to pursue an academic career and apply for a PhD, the best person to speak to once you've arrived probably is your academic mentor. So each student is allocated an academic mentor when they arrive to support them during their studies. That person may well be doing or have done a PhD. So really good to get some um, advice from that person. Also, um, some we can't guarantee this every year, but this year we're going to put on a session for the students to talk about applying for a PhD and for some of our PhD students to speak about their experiences of applying for a PhD. And I know plenty of students who have gone on from UCL to study for a PhD and who are now academics in various different universities including this one. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, Anshul, Danian, Eleni, not sure if you have had any meetings with Stephen or access to any kind of like career service at UCL, um, anything that you're thinking about, kind of your next steps um, that you think might be useful to share um, today, Eleni? Um, I had a meeting uh, at the, um end of um, the winter term um, and we were talking about general um, opportunities that I might have like um, because at like when you're and like for me for example when I'm in, at the start of the year like the academic year I might not be sure what I want to do next like apply for training contracts um, or only focus on paralegal positions and anything like that so we had a discussion about those things but um, I think the careers themes, uh, like job, is so extensive. So 
um, I don't know if they can have access to like um, and have a look at the website because you may have appointments to have a mock interview to like um, review your CV, like your cover letter. You can have many um, opportunities to talk with them. And I think that's something really beneficial. And even though you may not be sure what you want to do next, I will say to everyone to take advantage of those. And I might not be right on that, but I think we still have access even after we graduate, like for one or two years more. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. I think yeah. um, with the main careers web, the main career service, there's continuing access after you've um, finished at UCL for the main careers website for the main careers service. But I'm not sure that that's available for our laws, laws careers consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we also had an event yesterday as well. Uh, we had like the UCL Laws alumni that they came and spoke to us. And it was really beneficial because like they were like uh, four um, um, other girls that they were like um, here at the University of uh, like um, of UCL. And you could hear each one a story that they had to tell, talk with us. And you could see that um, everyone has their own path in this life. And it was something really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Eleni. Um, one other kind of careers related question um, for Sarah, potentially. Um, this person has said being a law student, internships are of major importance. So what are the prospects of legal internship programs? So um, again, I would suggest that you, uh, once you come to UCL, you speak to Stephen German about how to apply for internships, what sort of internships might suit you. Um, I know students do get and do do internships. I know students just done a, um, a family law internship. There are varieties of internships available. Again, I think that that's probably something to speak to the careers consultant when you arrive here. I know that students do it. Um, it's very important, though, to make sure that you devote enough time to your studies. So one piece of advice that I would like to give you is to not try to do too many things as well as studying. Now, when you look at the uh, website and you see that most of the modules are delivered by way of a two hour seminar, and you also, for some of them, may have a tutorials, um, there's a lot of work to do outside of the classroom. So as well as your seminar, it's really important that you do pre-reading before the seminar and that you do consolidation after the seminar so that you are able to be an independent learner. So you must uh, think that you're moving from being an undergraduate to being a postgraduate. So that's on the way to being maybe a PhD student. And you have to take responsibility for your own learning. So there's a lot of work to be done outside of the classroom. The other thing that I want to really emphasize is the research essay. And that you should probably spend at least one day a week researching and writing your research essay from the beginning of the year. So there's not much time for doing other activities, but there is some time. So think very carefully about what you're able to do and when you're able to do it. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, one other kind of um, assessment related question. Um, they This person was wondering how the, what the LLM assessment structure is like. Is it a mix of coursework and exams? Um, so I would say currently um, you can see the module information from previous years, which includes assessment information to give you a bit of a flavor um, about assessment types. Um, when we confirm the module information in the spring, if assessments have changed, uh, we usually try to um, update kind of assessment information when we share information about the modules that are running as well, um, so students can understand um, the assessment method for each particular module. Um, I don't know if, Sarah, is there anything more that you want to talk about in terms of kind of the 
uh, breadth of assessment um, across the program. Yeah, thanks very much, Jamie. Um, when you look at your modules, you can see the types of assessment for each particular module. As things have changed and we've come out of COVID, we have introduced some in-person exams again for the first time this year since COVID. So you may want to think about um, what sort of exams or assessments that you'll be asked to do when you're choosing your modules. Um, be aware there are a lot of modules have examinations, some of them have oral presentations and some of them have coursework as well. So have a look at the module descriptions to look at the type of assessments. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm mindful of the time. We have a few questions left that we haven't got to. There's one um, sort of interesting sort of stream of consciousness qu question that I thought we could kind of end on before a bit of a wrap up. Um, but we've got um, back to the kind of specialism choice. Um, somebody who's considering uh, the options between corporate law and criminal justice career versus kind of justice for society and wondering how, what they should do and obviously we can't really advise what's best for you um but sarah any any words of wisdom for somebody considering two kind of quite opposite um <laughs> choices yeah, it's an amazingly different choice and that's only you can decide um obviously whether or not you want to have lots of money and work very long hours or you may be working very long hours in the criminal justice system as well if you decide to go there. But probably you won't earn as much money. But you never know because you can always develop your career. So I would say do the thing that you love because you have to spend a lot of time at work. And the majority of your time at work is going to be um, developing your skills and knowledge in a particular area so go for the thing that you want to do that's going to um, help you get out of bed in the morning and think yeah great I'm going into work so uh, do the thing that inspires you rather than the, the thing that you think is the best thing to do um, the other thing I'd say is talk to lots and lots of different people try and talk to people who are corporate lawyers and who are criminal practitioners and um, ask for as much advice as you can. Great question. There is no answer. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Sarah. Um, I think to finish the session, um, we can just maybe go around quickly, um, give any final bits of advice uh, for our pool of applicants and offer holders with us today. Um, and also just want to remind perhaps uh, Jane, if you could, put in the chat a reminder of the LLM admissions email address. Um, so if anyone attending today does have extra questions or we didn't get to your question, um, please feel free to email us directly. Um, so maybe let's start with the students. Um, Anshul, any kind of final words of advice for those considering a degree at UCL or in progress as an offer holder? Um, yeah, I think I just have one piece of advice. Uh... Uh, like for any queries or worries that any uh, potential prospective students that might have is that um, even I, when I was uh, applying to UCL, I had a lot, bunch of queries. I was worried how it's going to be because the education system is different. The jurisdiction is different. I come from a different place. But uh, UCL has you covered it at all places. They literally hold your hands from right from the beginning till the very end. So uh, in my personal experience, this has been by far the best choice that I've made. So I would only advise, like, you know, you go ahead with the applications and submit them and the uh, rest of everything will be taken care of when, uh, when the time arrives. So yeah, thank you. Great, thanks Anshul. Um, Danian, any final thoughts from you? Um, I think uh, like throughout the questions, I would say don't be afraid to reach out, um, not only to the faculty and not only to staff. Um, before I came, I did reach out to some people um, who did the LLM before and they gave me like a lot of advice and had a lot of answers um, to a lot of my queries. Um, if you don't know someone who have been uh, through the UCL LLM, um, don't be afraid to maybe find some of them, just email them or ask for a quick chat. Um, maybe, for example, in LinkedIn, or it's very easy to find one, <laughs> to find a person who've done the UCLLM. Just don't be afraid to reach out with any more questions. Excellent. Thanks, Danian. Um, Eleni, any final thoughts from you? 
Um, I will say when you are applying at the UCL, try to allow yourself to have a lot of time and and check and and check again and again your application and try to demonstrate why you want to be like a UCL LLM student because at the start they're gonna only see a piece of paper of you so be wise and all the um, sentences that you're gonna use like try to demonstrate uh, why you deserve that position for example and also another thing that I will I wouldn't advise because I did that. Uh, because I didn't only apply for UCL, I applied for other universities. And at the start, I got some rejections from the other universities. And I was like, okay, now UCL is left. Maybe they're going to reject me, but see where I am now. So do not do that to yourself and do not compare yourself with others because we all deserve something in this world. That's all for me. Thank you. Thanks, Eleni. Um, Ruba, anything that you want to remind them about what they can expect on the program <laughs> um obviously i wish you all good luck in your applications um and we look forward to seeing you if you're joining us in september um basically on the program um we will have everything outlined for you in our uh program and information handbook so you'll have all the information you need about the program and we have a generic email address and we have a lovely team here of uh, program officers and administrators who will be on hand to help you throughout it throughout your journey at UCL. Thank you, Jamie. Super, thanks, Ruba. Um, and lastly, Sarah, uh, closing thoughts from you. Thank you very much. So thanks everybody for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing about course myself as well as everyone else, I think. Thank you so much for the students. My advice for prospective applicants is to listen to the students. They are the best, um, best advertising for the university because they are amazing people and you will find about another 300 LLM students should you be lucky enough to be offered a place and decide to join us in September. So I hope that you um, apply. Good luck with your application and hopefully see you in September. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, that concludes our session today. Um, we hope that you found it useful. It's given you a bit more insight into what you can expect into the program, support for the application process if you still need that at this point. Um, but again, just want to draw your attention to the chat and our email address um, for the admissions team within um, the Faculty of Laws if you do need any further support. Um, huge, huge thanks to everyone for their time today, particularly our student, um, our current students for coming along um, and so diligent answering so many of the questions that have come through um, but thanks as well to my colleagues um, for taking the time out today as well um, so we do hope to see most of you in September um, and please do be in touch if you need anything further thanks everyone bye-bye thank you Jamie <laughs>